This is Jack Jackson with part one of our series of lectures on inferential statistics. This one is on point estimators. We're going to begin by reviewing a little bit about the branches of probability and statistics. Statistics, as we recall, is the science of data. It involves collecting, classifying, summarizing, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting numerical information. Probability and statistics allow us to quantify uncertainty in order to assist us in making meaningful predictions and decisions. There are three branches of probability and statistics. Descriptive statistics, which is where we started the course. Then we went from there to probability, and we're ending with probably the most important part, which is inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is used to make sense of data, allowing us to effectively find and communicate important information from the data set in order to reach conclusions and make good decisions. So here, remember, we start with the sample, and we describe what we see in that sample, either by numerical statistic, such as the mean, the median, the mode, or perhaps uh, that would be measuring the center. We also might measure the variability, like the range or standard deviation or variance and so forth. So we can describe the characteristics that we see in the data, maybe graphically, maybe numerically. So descriptive statistics organizes and makes sense of data. It uses numerical and graphical methods, and we can use that to identify patterns in the data. It isolates and summarizes key information, and it simplifies the information, focusing on the items of interest, and it eliminates undesired information to avoid information overload. Probability, on the other hand, is used to draw conclusions about the likelihood that an arbitrary sample will have certain characteristics given information about a known population it is drawn from by assigning a numerical value to this event measuring the degree of uncertainty. So probability, notice, works from a known population or from historical data, and from that population we say something about the sample. So we know the general um, rules uh, that define the situation in general. So we know the basic population. And then we say, okay, well, what happens if we take a sample from that population? What's the probability that a certain event will happen? And of course, as we, as we know, we assign probabilities to events. There are always a number between 0 and 1 inclusive. And so we're quantifying the likelihood of an event. So we're measure, gives, this gives us a measure of the degree of uncertainty. That number is a number, again, from 0 to 1. 0 probability of the event that does not happen. Probability of event being 1 means that that event must happen. And they're given in decimal fraction percentage or ratio form. And again, probability 0 is an impossible event. Probability 1 is a certain event. Probability 1 half is equally likely to happen or not, and so forth. Now that brings us to inferential statistics, which is the whole point of, really, of the whole course, and certainly the point of this lecture. And we want to talk about inferential statistics. Well, inferential statistics is used to draw conclusions about a population given information about a representative sample, and use this information in good decision making. Decision making there is the key part. So we want a data-driven decision making. That's what inferential statistics is all about. So in inferential statistics we want to know information about the population but it is impractical, expensive, or impossible to measure the entire population. Sometimes it's impossible because the entire population includes uh, all possible event, um, items that happen in the past, present, or future. Other times it's stuff that's actually out there right at the moment uh, in theory, it might be possible to measure it, but it's so large of a population that it's very impractical or expensive because it costs money to make to do the measuring. So we don't do that. We can't measure the whole population, or we don't choose to do that. So instead, what we want to do is look at a sample. So we use the data from the uh, sample, and we use that to make estimates, predictions, generalizations, and decisions about what would happen in the larger population. So we use the sample data to infer population characteristics. There's the inferential part, because we're inferring 
something about the population by looking at the sample. So notice it goes from the sample to the population. That makes it the opposite of probability. In probability, we started with the population, and from that, we assigned a probability to what would happen with a particular sample. This is going backwards from probability. In this case, we know the sample, and from the sample, we use that to tell us something about what's happening in the population. Again, the biggest point of this is this allows us to make database decisions. So decisions are no longer based on uh, a gut feeling or, or some emotional response, but are rather based on actual data. And when it's at all possible, we want our decisions to be based on data. And, it's, and it also allows us to quantify confidence in these decisions. So not only is it going to um, give us a way to look at data and make the decisions, it's going to give us some numerical measure of how good these decisions might be or how likely these decisions are to actually uh, you know, be accurate. And again, this is the main goal of the course, is to do inferential statistics. So here we are doing it towards the end of the semester here, but we had to do uh, our descriptive statistics and our probability in order to be able to do inferential statistics. So inferential statistics uses really everything we've done all semester to uh, give us these methods that we're going to be using here. Okay, so the first inferential statistic we're going to look at are what are called point estimators. Now, a point estimator is we're using a statistic from a sample to estimate the co corresponding population parameter. Remember, when we measure something from a sample, it's called a statistic, and we measure the same thing in a population, it's called a parameter. For example, the mean, um, we could talk about the mean of the entire population, that would be a parameter whereas the mean of a sample is a statistics. So we can use the sample mean, remember we use the symbol x bar for that, to estimate the population mean, and remember we use the symbol mu, lowercase Greek, Greek letter mu. Similarly, we could use the sample variance, s square, to estimate the population variance, sigma square. And probably these are the two most common things that we might be estimating, the mean and the variance. But we could estimate any sort of parameter that we wanted to. Um, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, the median, the mode, whatever. We could estimate any of these things, um, and that would be a point estimator. Well, there are two basic characteristics that we would like for a point estimator. We want it to be unbiased and to have minimal variance. So what does that mean? Well, unbiased means that the distribution centers up correctly. And we'll, I'll be more specific about that on the next slide. And minimal variance, it has a very small variance, small variability, if we were to repeat this over and over again. So for an unbiased estimator, what does that mean is the mean of the sampling distribution of sample estimators is the same as the target parameter. So let's, let's think about that a second. What, we, what we're saying here is, remember, if we take, for example, the sample means, we know from what we looked at earlier that the distribution of sample means uh, has its own distribution. In fact, we know it's more likely to be normal or close to normal. Uh, or certainly more normal than the original population, perhaps. And so we get a, a different distribution of sample means. Well, it has its own mean, the mean of the means, and we want that mean of the means to be the same as the mean of the general population, and of course it actually is. So that means that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator. So what we want is the statistic does not routinely over or underestimate the target parameter. And again, the sample mean is an unbiased estimator for population mean. However, if we looked at the sample variance and we use the n in the formula, the same way we use, if we use the same formula with the sample that we did with the population for variance, we would find out that the sample variance has a tendency to uh, underestimate the population 
variability. There's more variability in the population than there is in a sample. And so um, that means that that sample variance is, an, is a biased estimator. Well, the, if we use the formula for population variance, it would be a biased estimator. But if we adjust that formula by putting the n minus 1 in it, go back and review the uh, video on how we compute the sample variance, if you don't remember what we're talking about here. But if you'll see that, we, we put an n minus 1 in the denominator rather than an n. And the reason we did that is to make this an unbiased estimator for the population variance. And one can actually show that that's the right amount to adjust the formula to make that an unbiased estimator. So, bottom line is, the sample mean is an unbiased estimator for the population mean, and the sample variance is an unbiased estimator for the population variance. The sample variance with that n minus 1 in the formula. So, those are two examples of unbiased estimators, probably the two main ones that we're going to be dealing with in this course. So, number one characteristic, we want the estimator to be unbiased. Then the next thing is what we'd really like is a minimal variance unbiased estimator. And what this says, of all the possible unbiased estimators, we want the one with the smallest variance in the sampling distribution. And it turns out the sample mean is a minimal variance unbiased estimator for the population mean. So what this is saying is X bar is the best possible estimate for mu if we only know the information given in the sample. And really the same is true for, for uh, the, the S square, the sample variance. It's the best estimator for sigma square, the population variance. So let's look at an exercise here. Suppose that we are wanting to know the mean and variance of the weights of all UAFF students. It's impractical and costly to measure the weights of the entire population, so what are we going to do? We're going to measure a sample. So we pick 30 students that we see on campus, and suppose their weights in pounds are given by these numbers here, 230 pounds, 150 pounds, etc. And by the way, this is just purely made up data, so this is not necessarily representative of of actual UAFS students. But let's suppose this was our sample. Then what would be the best estimate of the mean weight of all UAFS students given this data? What is the best estimate of the variance in weight of all UAFS students given this data? Go ahead and see if you can compute this. Compute it and come back. Press pause now. Well, we're back, and we see that, of course, as we just discussed, the best way to find the mean of the population, or the best way to estimate that, is to just find the mean of this sample. And similarly, the best way to estimate the variance in the, the population is to use the sample variance of this sample. And the calculator will compute the sample mean, and it will compute the sample standard deviation, which we can square to find the sample variance. And it turns out that when you do that, the sample mean is 159.7 pounds, and the sample variance is uh, 1,745.04488. And so these are as far as the calculator will go. Uh, again, just do this on the calculator. Well, how would you do this? You'd press Stat, Edit, type in all of these numbers here, and then we would go to um, Stat, Calc, and we'd select the first one there, one variable, statistics for whatever list you put this in. Yeah, the first thing at the top will be X bar, which is 159.7 pounds. Somewhere down the road will be sigma sub X. Uh, you either write that down and then square it, or just go to vi uh, quit, second to mode is quit, and then go down and find uh, sigma square, which is you go to variables, V-A-R-S, go down somewhere down there, about the fourth or fifth one or so is statistics. Hit that one and then you'll find sigma sub x's there, hit that, and then square it, and you'll get this for the variance. I'm sorry, not sigma sub, sigma sub x, s sub x, because this is a sample. s sub x, not sigma sub x, s sub x. So a point estimator is a single number that, that estimates the population parameter. 
So in this last example here, this number right here, 159.7 pounds, was our best estimate of the weight of all mean weight of all UAFS students. But uh, we don't know that that's the actual mean weight. In fact, if we put, pulled up another, another sample of, say, 30 students, we might get a completely different mean. In fact, most likely we would. We do it again and again and again, and each time we get a variable mean. And so that's a single number, but it's going to vary from sample to sample. So it's almost certain that we've actually missed the actual true mean weight of all students um, at least a little bit, hopefully not by much, but by some. And the other thing that we don't have with this, by given a single number like this, we don't have any measure of how certain we are that, that uh, or how confident we are that we actually have a, a number. So we don't know how far off it might be from the real mean or how confident we are uh, that we are pretty close. So, what our solution is to this is a confidence interval. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about confidence intervals in more detail. So instead of just giving a single number, a point estimator, like the sample mean, to estimate the population parameter, like the population mean, we give an interval of value, values, say from some low number to some high number, lower number to higher number, and we say that the mean is in between there or at least we're going to predict that the mean is in between there. That interval is called a confidence interval. And so the middle of that interval will always be your point estimator, and then there's some margin of error that you go above and below that. So uh, suppose we want to find a confidence interval for the population mean mu. We're going to use an interval that is x bar minus a margin of error e up to x bar plus the margin of error e. And what we hope is, is that the real mu is somewhere in that interval. And, furthermore, we can use our knowledge of sampling distributions and our knowledge of what we've learned before about probability and statistics to assign a level of confidence in this interval. So, for example, we might be 90% sure that our interval includes the true unknown value of mu. So the next, va next video will flesh this idea of a confidence interval out. So, in summary, we're looking at inferential statistics in this unit. That is where we start with the sample, and from the sample, we're going to infer information about the general population. We're going to use our knowledge of probability and statistics to help us derive some techniques that we can use here. And... Uh, the first one is we want to estimate a population parameter. Our best estimate is the point estimator, which is usually the same sample measure from the sample. For example, we want to estimate the population mean. We're going to estimate it with the sample mean. But that has problems because it's not, you know, there's going to be variability from sample to sample. So we fix that by instead of looking at just a single point, we look at it at a confidence interval. So really, there's two main areas that we're going to be looking at in inferential statistics. One is confidence intervals, and the other one is hypothesis testing. So this is our very first introduction to the first of those two big areas, which is confidence intervals. More about that in the next video.